Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the next episode in the series here. Uh, in the last episode we just kind of started our project and we uh, set up or, or we discussed a uh, room and exactly what is under the umbrella of this library um, and then you know we're gonna go ahead and just start to implement some things in this episode. So I can link this in the description again but we will take this all for sure we don't really need to worry about testing at this very moment but we will take uh, some stuff from our dependencies So we just had to uh, import this stuff from the documentation, ran into a small little error. Um, uh, we needed to just apply this Kotlin capped plugin, but once we did that, everything was up and running. And uh, let's just go ahead and continue on here. So um, I guess the next thing that we really need to do is kind of just define our data models here. So. Let's go ahead and create a new package. Okay, so it's probably been about 15 minutes and I've thought through probably a few dozen words or ways to describe this thing that I'm trying to, to make here and I have landed on the word item. Um, so essentially everything in our list here uh, that we're gonna end up building is going to be known as an item entity it's pretty common practice to append the word entity to the end of your you know, model class name to signify that it is part of the room um, you know, environment, if you will. So, uh, so we can just look at this and, and create a regular data class for the time being, right? So we're gonna have an ID Okay, so we've just created a simple data class here, item entity with a bunch of fields, right? We're gonna have an ID so we can uniquely identify it, the title, an optional description, a priority level, a created at timestamp, and then a category ID, which we'll dive into later, but it's possible that maybe we're gonna have multiple categories, uh, i.e. Amazon versus the grocery store or something like that. Um, so anyway, uh, this is just kind of future thinking, but otherwise it seems pretty straightforward here to create uh, you know, just an entity. And we do so by exactly that. So now we can go ahead and store this data class and have it translate to a table. We go ahead and create another package here, the uh, data access object package. We will call this one the uh, sorry, item DAO. So uh, is this a class or uh, can we make it an object? It is an interface, interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to an interface. You're gonna annotate it with the at DAO. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a few functions here. Um, so let's see, we can at least do Copy that, we'll obviously change it. Uh, I don't think you really need to insert all, but we can definitely insert a single one. And then we can also delete. So let's copy these real quick. Okay, so we can get all item entity. Uh, we can insert an item entity and we can delete an item entity and as you see here there's an issue with the fact that user just it doesn't like user uh, so yeah 
so as you're typing certain things out here uh, in the query, it understands that because we've annotated this class entity with, um, oh, sorry, this data class with the entity annotation, that it can come up in a particular query specific to room. So actually what we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to change uh, the table name here to just be something a little bit more uh, readable and then you'll see this also like kind of go away and then we can go ahead and just find the item. Too. So there is a little bit of connectivity within the IDE just from these annotations uh, and then this is renaming the actual table instead of just the default everything being lowercase in the name of class. Um, and so there we go we've kind of at least for now created the beginnings of our data access object and then we are going to go ahead and also just create uh, whoa not Java create the app database class now I believe this has to be abstract yes so it has to be abstract extend the room database and then we have our definitions of the DAO so we'll make it abstract. We will extend our, no, 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 sorry, our room database. And then we will create our abstract function. What is it called? Item, item DAO. I'm going to rename that. So we've gone ahead and, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so we've gone ahead and renamed the item and the item DAO to the item entity DAO to be a little bit more consistent. And then we are going to annotate, annotate this with database. There are a few things that we need here. So we need a list of entities. So let's go ahead and say uh, array of our item entity. Is that what it needs, right? Yeah. And then also the version code here, which at this point is just going to be one. We can just go ahead and replace it with that. And then as we need more, we can just go ahead and, you know, add more to it. So uh, we have our database set up. Sorry, we have our database set up. We have our uh, entity set up within our database at version one we have our DAO and our entity and now it's just a question of um, how we're going to go ahead and do this or use this so let us now create our database here right, so we're just gonna do 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 We've gone ahead and created our uh, our let's do app database to be the instance of a room database. We're doing it by lazy, and we're gonna make the database name to by database. Sounds good. Um, and now we're ready to use this thing. If we were to go ahead and you know reference it here. Um, which you can see that it's pretty easy that to get the DAO and then get the users from the actual uh, DAO itself. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut the video here. We have everything set up to actually start using the database, but now we need to kind of get our application up and running to our standard of uh, development, and we will do so in the next episode. So I will catch you there.